Hi everybody, how are you? My name is Dan Dulac. Welcome back to my Ultima Evolution Convertible V10 build. This is episode 20. We're getting up there in episodes. This is actually the fourth episode on my custom header fabrication process for the 5.2 liter V10 out of a 2017 Audi R8 that's going to be the power plant in this car. So I am super excited to share with you today where I'm at in the progress. I finished welding all the runners on both passenger and driver's side exhaust header, so they're all welded up. I've got three things left to do. Number one, taking the advice of all of you, I did purchase a uh, hydraulic pipe expander, just a hand pump pipe expander. That's actually gonna arrive today. And what I plan on doing is just using that to expand each tube in the collector just a little bit, maybe five thousandths of an inch, so they'll slide onto the collectors on both headers. With that in place, then what I'll do is finish weld the base of the runners at the exhaust flange itself. There's a little bit of play in the runner tubes right now because I haven't finished welded the base, which is good. I'm gonna use that to my advantage so that I can just ever so slightly tune or tweak the runners to get them to line up with the exhaust collector. Once those slide in, I'll finish weld the tubes at the base of the collector. And then finally, just some connector tabs that I'll weld onto the collector and the runner. Just a couple, it's all it's needed just to secure the collector to the runners so they won't move. So I am super excited to share with you process. I'm stoked to how they turned out. So without further ado, let's get into uh, watch me put these things together. And uh, by the way, the engine is just over my shoulder. You might be able to see it in this shot, but uh, we're gonna show that off too. So let's jump right in. So you may have seen what I'm doing is I'm actually uh, adding some additional tax on each of these, more substantial tax, so that again, the stainless steel likes to expand uh, quite a bit and warp. So I'm trying to prevent some of that. So I've been adding some, some more substantial tax to each one of these before I start to finish weld. I've got purging, back purging set up. So you can see my supply here uh, with my purge plug on the other end, that will displace any atmosphere or oxygen that's in there with uh, argon. I've got a dual flow meter back there on my little 80 cubic foot argon tank, and that's set at 10 CFM, so uh, 10, that's all it needs. My torch setup is right here. I've got a FUPA 12 cup uh, with gas lens on it. I'm running 2% lanthanated tungsten uh, on my little CK17 torch here and I'm running at about 25 CFH of argon. Uh, the other key thing with this is post 
post flow. So after you uh, shut off your arc, you want gas to continue to flow out of this for a period of time, especially with stainless steel. And I can show you an example. So I had forgotten when I was doing spot weld, I had post flow turned on for like five seconds and I started to do a finish weld. And you can see here uh, the, the purple color in this. Um, and ultimately, colors are cool in stainless. You see a lot of people use colors, but what that is is oxidation, and you don't want oxidation ultimately. So um, the purple is a post flow of five seconds, and then just behind it, my last seam, I had remembered to turn it up back to 12 or 13 seconds, and you can see there, it's like a golden color. That's what you want to see. So post flow has a lot to do with uh, the coloring on your stainless welds. So as you can imagine, you burn through argon gas pretty quickly when you've got back purge going at 10 CFM, you've got your primary shielding gas running at 25 CFM with a big cup. Uh, it, it, uh, it eats through gas pretty quickly. So let me also show you my torch settings. It's running at 50, I've got it 55 amps, full pedal, uh, no pulse turned on. I've got post flow, as I mentioned, uh, it's probably 10 seconds of post flow. That's my torch settings. And the other thing you may notice is I'll weld a seam and then flip it around to the other side and weld another, I don't know, eight to 10 dabs and then flip it around and go back to the other side and just keep going. And what I'm trying to do there is, is keep the heat out of the part. So just alternate the heat. If you just keep going contiguously all the way around, you really heat soak this and your, your heat deformation is, is higher risk there. So you can see here, I haven't uh, scotch brighted this yet, but this is exactly what you see. Very low heat affected zone, nice goldish color. That's what you want to see. So uh, again, 55 amps, full pedal. I've just got full pedal all the way through. Get good penetration with that small uh, 035 wire. That's the setup. I'm going to keep going on this uh, and charge through. And uh, we're going to keep forging away on finish welding every one of these runners and then get it all, get it all back together. Alright guys, well, I've got all the runners welded up, came out pretty good, pretty happy with it. I got it all fit back together. I've got these last two runners to go. I taped number five in just to hold it in place. I think it's going to be good, but take a look at number four. So during the welding process, and I was trying to be very careful of this, but it, it appeared to move and it moved on this joint. Um, and this joint actually had a, a fairly decent gap in it that I had to fill and bridge. So what I think I'm going to have to do is just cut this joint so that I can, so that I can swivel this, this piece to the right, just about a quarter inch or so, maybe half an inch. And, that's, and then it will fit right up perfect. So just as well, that was a crappy joint. I'll just cut this here grind it down, uh, re-weld re it, and we should be good to go there. But everything else fits pretty good. Not too shabby, but uh, we're getting there. And I am probably gonna run out of, once I get this done, it's probably gonna end up being about 80 cubic feet of argon per exhaust header. 
So my little tank over there is about quarter full. So anyways, that's where we're at. We'll fix this up, get it rewelded. We should be good to go. So all things considered, not too bad. And then we'll move on to the uh, passenger side. I've got one more tack to make at the base of the flange and this thing will be pretty much buttoned up except for the finish welds at the uh, header flange all the way across. And I'm gonna wait for, I did end up buying a hydraulic pipe expander. Uh, I wanna use the pipe expander on the collector first so that I can actually fit the collector up to um, runners for final fit. What I find is there's a little bit of play down where I just tacked these uh, mid runner spacers to the flange. There's a little bit of play. So up here, when I put the flange on here, when I take it on and off, I can manipulate the pipes just a little bit. And that manipulation is because there's a little bit of play down here on these. So this is gonna be the absolute final uh, weld once I get the collector here. Now, I ended up getting that uh, number four done, no problem. There's the re-welded seam right there. And what I ended up having to do was put a pie cut in down here, because the fitment was off a little bit down here. So I put a little pie cut, I actually had a leftover piece that actually fit perfect there. I actually tried a technique that I've seen, but I've never tried, which is to fill a, a gap in steel you actually make these little stitches. You make stitches all the way across, and then when you come in, you can do a weave weld and tie it all together because you've got some extra material there and you won't burn through. So, um, worked out pretty well, I think. Um, and then again, once the finished bead is on there, you won't even know that there's a, that there's a pie cut in there and it was stitched together. And I've got number five uh, fit here. It's not even welded in, you know you've got a good fit when you can just set it in place, your clocking marks line up and it's just sitting there on its own. There's, I don't even have to have any hands or helpers to hold that in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tack this, this last piece up and then I'm gonna call this one done until I get the uh, hydraulic pipe expander so I can fit the, the collector for the final time and then finish weld all the way down here at the flange. So pretty cool, I'm pretty excited how this is turning out. Yeah, I am pumped. I just got these uh, headers on the car and not only do they fit, thank God, they look incredible. I am so excited how these things turned out. I even got better fitment in some of these pieces where I put that pie cut in it actually helped close up, you know, gap over here that I had. So those runners just are all aligned. They look really good. They're clumped together nice and tight. I am just super excited about this. I also trimmed all four. So as you can see here, they're all four the same length now, uh, which is good because it'll actually push the, uh, it'll actually push the collector back this way a little bit as it fully slides on so that most of the bulk is here and then it, as it hits the end of the, the head here, it'll shrink down to the three inch tube and then I can curve it into the X pipe. But man, that looks good. So excited how that turned out. And then it's on to the other side. 
that side is itching to go. So let's get right to it. Finish these things up. All right, guys, I am on to the second exhaust header. I just peel off uh, cylinder number six and I've got it here on the bench. And I figured what I would do is just uh, show you a couple of tools that I'm uh, using here. First of all, uh, back purging, really important on these, on these parts. I'm actually using these cool uh, purge plugs from TIG Aesthetics. Pretty sweet uh, little units. They have a dispersion screen on the back side, plugs right into my purge tube, and my dual valve setup, which works great. And let me see if I can show you why purging is so important. So you can see the, the welds on the outside. And again, I've just been using uh, scotch Bright pad once I'm done and just, just uh, wiping off the oxidation, so to speak, since these are gonna be coated anyway, so the pretty colors are gonna get covered up anyway, so I just, I just scrub off that oxidation. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, let me see if I can get a, a light down in here. There we go, so you can see the weld on the inside is just as good as the weld on the outside. Good penetration flows on the inner part of the tube just like it does on the outer part of the tube, which is what you want for a good solid weld and seal. So that is that setup and also my steady rest here. The number one rule in TIG welding is be comfortable. Always be comfortable and resting your TIG hand, your torch hand on something that's, that's movable. It's got a, a magnetic base here. That's a magnetic base, so on like a, a steel table like this one it works great it's completely adjustable up and down here you turn these wing nuts here and you can loosen it up and you may have seen me doing this on the time lapse on the fly it's really quick to just adjust this thing uh, where you need it so pretty happy with with this tool i don't know what i would do without it just hand propping is so important especially as you're learning to tig weld being comfortable and a steady torch hand is critical you know you got a good fit up when one-handed, I'm gonna slide this tube in my little holder here, and then this just falls into place. Right where it's supposed to be. Clock marks line up, one-handed. That's when you know you got a good fit up and the tube didn't move at all during welding. Let's hope the four final runners go that way and we'll wrap this baby up. You know what that is? Yep, that is a hydraulic, manually operated tube expander. And you know what that means? Oh yeah, collectors are going on the runners. So I've got the passenger side already on. I'm gonna show that to you, and then I'll walk you through how I did it on the driver's side. So let's take a look. I'm super, super stoked. So there it is. It's fully on. Seated all the way back. Uh, as you'll see in a moment, what I had to do, I, uh, I got it started and then just had to uh, tap the end a bit just to get it to slide on all the way. But before I slid it on, I just made a little hash mark with a magic marker. That's a full inch and seven eighths along this tube, which is right where this uh, shoulder is. So I, wanna, I did that to make sure I knew when to stop. <laughs> when to go all the way up in. So that thing is fully slid on there. And man, does that look cool. It, it looks like an engine out of a, out of a top fuel boat. Um, 
deep V hauled racing boat or whatnot. That's that's what it reminds me of. Uh, but anyways, that is cool. So what I'm gonna do, I ordered some. I'm just gonna wait for them to arrive. I'm gonna install two uh, connector tabs, not the spring. I'm not gonna use the spring. I'm gonna use, there's a different version where it's, it's two tabs with a hole um, and you just pass a, a bolt through with a lock nut. So I'm gonna do one kind of on the underside here and then on the underside back here so that they're somewhat hidden. Um, but anyway, that'll be plenty to hold those on. It's a very snug fit. Like I said, I had to tap, I had to tap three quarters of this on with the hammer. I could wiggle it to start, but uh, I needed a hammer to get it to the rest of the way on. So that pipe expander did the trick. Just open those pipes up in the collector just enough to slide those babies on. And see how this thing does with light. So you can see all the tubes slid into their home and a nice collector junction point, again, in the, in the collector where all five come together into one. So pretty, pretty cool. I am super excited about this. So let's jump onto the passenger side. I'll show you guys uh, how easy it is with the, with the pipe expander, tube expander, and then we will put on the driver's side. So let's get to it. Let me show you what I'm doing here and how this works. This is the pipe expander. I've got just a piece of test pipe. So here it is. So you can get this pipe and just shimmy it in and slides in. So it's still snug, but you can still shimmy. And that's, that's what you want. So that's all the way in right there into that shoulder. So that's what you want. Now you, when you slide this on the collector, you can't shimmy all the tubes, of course. So that's where you just use the hammer, tap the end, and you just want it just loose enough where it's still snug, but you can still slide it on there, tap it on there with a hammer. So let's try to get this fitted onto the engine. guys there she is driver's side all set passenger side all set we have a set of headers that looks awesome so now all I've got to do now that the collectors are on the runners and as you saw I, I marked and then slid them all the way back to the marker make sure they're on all the way now we're just gonna weld the base at the flange. So back down here, I've got to weld this seam and then the seam at the flange that you can see right there. And by the way, this is a pretty cool shot of how this flange seats into the side of the, into the side of the head. You can see again, this angle up here and the sud comes out somewhat at an angle, but it's square with the nut as well as uh, this bracket down here so based on the fitment i'm looking at looks like i got those measurements right and perfectly reproduced a 3 8 inch header flange there worked out great so i've got to weld all these tubes up and i'll do that uh, right now and then all i've got to do is weld on a couple uh, of mounting tabs just to make sure that with the heating and cooling that these don't work their way work their way off just, just slide them in there. But they're a super snug fit. That pipe expander, tube expander worked perfectly. So I am absolutely stoked at how these came out. Really, really nice. And by the way, I don't know what I would have done without these. 
Man, if you, anybody out there watching this, if you ever build yourself a set of headers, have a friend, if you don't have a 3D printer, have a friend, find a friend with a 3D printer and make yourself up some of these uh, mock-up fixtures for the collector. Because man, they helped so much with just lining up the runners to the right locations without requiring the heavy collector as part of the process. These, these were the ticket and I, it made this job so much easier. So highly recommended. Unfortunately, these are junk now. I don't need them because I have got myself a set of real collectors and headers. I am pumped. Let's finish these babies up.